Welcome back to Channel Family and the podcast, Paul Peterhead, Scotland. Um, I thought it righteous to do something of a Jewish war summary. Um, if you look back on the channel, friends, to uh, the terrible events of October the 7th, 2023, if you look, were to look back, you would see that I probably recorded uh, um, three or four podcasts wherein I've given a, a brief summary of, of events in Israel at the present time. Now, um, today... Uh, is uh, Thursday the 18th of April 2024 um, and uh, on October 7, 2023 the wicked Hamas Mohammedans uh, launched, launched a brutal invasion, invasion into Israel uh, and slaughtered 1,300 plus civilians and burned them alive, raped them and uh, killed them in brutal fashion and tortured them in front of each other. It was absolutely brutal, really, really was. Um, and they took over 200 persons back into Gaza, which would have been horrific, and over 100 of those hostages are still missing. Since then, Israel has uh, gone into Gaza in the south of Israel and has uh, pushed uh, 95% of the Mohammedans in that land, the north of the Palestinians, into the very south of Israel and uh, has proceeded to destroy uh, Hamas infrastructure, which was largely built underneath hospitals and, and other civic buildings government buildings and schools so that uh, so that they couldn't be bombed and uh, the Palestinian um, Hamas Mohammed terrorists uh, have uh, designedly um, used human shields uh, as very much part of their war effort and uh, you know Gaza should be like Monaco with the hundreds of millions of pounds of foreign aid that's been poured into it in the last 15 years but instead there was great poverty um, despite receiving millions. Meanwhile, the Hamas political leaders, they don't even live there. They live in places like Turkey and Qatar, multi-multi-millionaires, these wicked men. Um, anyway, so um, what's happened is it's, uh, there's been some recent events that are very important. So I don't know if any of my listeners are familiar with the recent news from Israel. Um, so what happened was on the 1st of April this year, um, 2024, Israel uh, sent a bomb to the Iranian embassy, the Iranian consulate in Damascus in Syria, and that killed some Iranians, including one of their brigadiers of the uh, the Iranian guard. Uh, and Iran was very angry about it and said that they were going to strike back at Israel when they were ready to, and it took them 13 days to do so. Uh, and on the morning of Saturday the 13th of April, which was five days ago, um, Iran launched 300 ballistic missiles and, and drones uh, towards Israel. What was most unusual about this was, uh, well, I suppose the unusual and wonderful thing is that 99%, over 95%, they, they claim 99%, but certainly the vast majority of them were shot down and never actually reached Israel, only a very small amount of them um, reached Israel, at least 300 bombs. Uh, ballistic missiles um, and drones actually reached, uh, well, they probably didn't even reach their targets because it's very difficult to send precise munitions to its specific targets over those distances. But only a very small amount of them landed in Israel. Um, so that's one precious thing. Also, um, what was unique was that Jordan, um, which is a large country just to the right of Israel. It's actually part of Israel, but it's currently inhabited uh, by Mohammedans uh, who were given Jordan by the British um, in the last middle of the last century. Um, it was actually supposed to be part of Israel. Britain gave it to the Mohammedans. <clears throat> so Jordan has now become an established uh, place where it's got a king, it's a monarchy, and uh, they've got a big set of munitions and, and air force and uh, guns and soldiers and, and an army and they shot down a lot of these missiles um, but if, you, if you were to look at the screen friends just now you can see well if I make it small again you see America over on the left there United States, North America and then you can see the, the two boots, Brazil Peru, Bolivia on the left, Argentina, and then you've got the whole of Africa. Again, that looks like a big boot. Um, and many of those nations, particularly in the north of Africa, are Mohammedan Muslim nations. 
If you look, you see Morocco just underneath Spain, Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Sudan, um, Somalia, South Sudan. They're all Mohammedan nations, Islamic nations. Then you have Saudi Arabia. We'll just zoom in a little bit, friends. You can see Europe just above Algeria there, Spain, France, Germany, the UK, Great Britain, Sweden, Finland. And then you can see to the right, to the, uh, to the north east of uh, Israel is Russia uh, and the Stans, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan. And then you see China and India over to the east. But coming closer towards Israel, you see uh, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, uh, and Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Now, they are all uh, Muslim countries, you know. Most Muslims are taught, as soon as they're able to understand, to hate the Jewish people. And um, what's happened is in this, on um, April the 13th, when Iran launched these 300 missiles and drones, and they gave warning, they gave two or three days' notice to the regional nations, namely Turkey, Saudi Arabia. Well, I suppose that everybody knew, you know, they told Turkey, Iraq, uh, Syria, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Israel, and America and Britain that they were going to do this. Um, and so an alliance of great British, American, um, Jordanian and Israeli Air Force shot down and surface-to-air missiles shot down, uh, as I say, almost all of the uh, the munitions that were sent from Iran to Israel. So much more could be said about these things, friends. Um, um, and the the reality on the ground is that Israel has never had any uh, has never invaded or systematically oppressed any of those nations in its seventy. Now, what are we in a 76 year existence since 1948 when Elohim Yahweh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, um, by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Christianized nations, through the United Nations, in outpouring of benevolence and compassion, philanthropic love and goodness, um, established Israel as a sovereign nation again. Um, and in those 76 years, Israel is not. Uh, systematically or oppressed uh, or invaded any nations. Uh, indeed, has endured the uh, sabre-rattling of the wicked Mohammedan nations surrounding them, who, as I say, are taught from, from birth to hate the Jewish people. So that's what's going on anyway, friends. And it's now Thursday. That was five days ago. And um, when uh, the wicked Mohammedan uh, Hamas government in uh, Gaza invaded Israel on October the 7th, slaughtering over 1,300 civilians brutally and raping and burning them alive. Um, Israel responded <clears throat> a number of weeks later by uh, by repossessing their land in the south of Israel known as Gaza. Um, and so, uh, as I say, on April the 1st, the Turkish, uh, sorry, not the Turkish, in the, uh, the embassy in Syria, in Damascus, uh, belonging to Iran, was attacked by Israel. Uh, and Iran said they were going to respond. It took them 12 days to do so, April the 13th. And um, and now Israel is saying they're going to respond. So a sovereign nation can't allow another large neighbor to send 300 missiles and drones uh, towards its, uh, its land and not respond. So the situation is developing, and uh, of course, uh, the complicity of Jordan and uh, Amer North America, Great Britain, um, and Saudi Arabia, um, um, in the defeat of Iran, uh, is very important. And of course, it's a great matter of joyous celebration that uh, uh, that the, the, the wicked uh, Iranian regime didn't have its way in harming Jewish persons in the land of Israel. So it has to be said, friends, that, uh, that, that, that there are a lot of uh, uh, persons that, that are of uh, good, reasonable human character in Iran. It's very important, friends, to, to have a balanced understanding of world affairs. And uh, it, with what we have known as the media, 
uh, which is for many people the only way to learn um, about what's going on in foreign lands. Uh, that's the reason why most people have a skewed, you know, a skew with understanding of what's really going on. Um, and what's really going on is when it comes to Iran, the Iranian regime, the Ayatollah, um, Iran, Iran is a, uh, it's a, it's a religious country. So it's, it's actually, it is, Turkey, for example, is a secular Mohammedan Muslim country, you know. Um, uh, and although Turkey, which is a nuclear power, a mighty military nu nuclear power, used to be the Ottoman Empire, one of the most powerful empires ever, that is a secular Mohammedan nation. Whereas Iran, uh, it's it's the religious leaders that rule Iran. It's, it's that's different to Turkey, and it's a wicked regime that allows the stoning of women. And it really is a wicked regime, and. The vast, the majority of, of ordinary people in Iran do not want the Iranian regime uh, in power, and um, the majority of, of of Mohammedan persons in the nations surrounding Iran do not like the Iranian regime either. Um, and indeed, the reason for the October seventh attack upon Israel, which was absolutely shocking. Um, was the uh, the financing, the empowering, the militarizing, um, and the arming of of, uh, of wicked Mohammedans against Israel by Iran? So currently, Iran uh, and for many years now has been financing and training and supporting uh, and arming persons in Gaza, uh, in Egypt, in Yemen. Uh, and you can just see there, friends, if I adjust the screen. Um, oh, um, you can see that. Oh, hold on, friends. Yes, so you, you, you have different types of Muslim. There's two main types you have the Sunni Muslims and the Shiite Muslims. And, um, Iran, the type of Muslim that they are, is, is the minority. And so a number of the countries around them don't particularly like the Iranian regime. Well, not necessarily being against the Iranian people. Uh, it has to be said that there are Jewish persons that live quite happily in Iran. There are Christian persons. But a lot of the regions in Iran, um, it's, it's dangerous uh, on various levels. Um, as I said, they allow the stoning of women. Um, uh, and the oppression of women, it, it's uh, forced marriages and all this kind of thing. Um, and um, and so the situation is, is that there's quite a lot of nations in that region that would rather like to get rid of the Iranian regime. That's the situation. Um, so so that's where we're at, friends. Um, six, five days ago, Iran sent 300 missiles and drones uh, towards Israel. Uh, almost all of them were shot down by a coalition, including Jordan, which is quite important. And, of course, these bombs and munitions would have had to fly over Iraq, uh, over parts of Syria and over Jordan towards to reach Israel, you see, which is a distance of about 1,200 miles. Uh, now, it has to be said, Iran um, does have a massive army, uh, as in, you know, persons that, that are standing army, um, although most countries exaggerate the quantity of soldiers they have available. But either way around, it's a very large army. Um, so that's the situation. Um, so we'll just have to see how things work out, friends. Um, yeah. So God's power is over all. And, uh, the king of Israel rules the whole universe, the king of the Jews. And Elohim Yawah is very, very, very great. So at the present time, uh, the uh, the Israeli politicians are deciding how to respond. Uh, as in most governments, you've got hardliners and, and then you've got more gently, gently people. So there are prominent persons in the Israeli government that say we should just blow up the Iranian regime. And then there are others that say, no, let's hold on. And, and of course, they've had... Uh, number of days to prepare for this eventuality, discourse their options to respond. 
Um, but it may well be time for the Iranian regime uh, to go. You know, um, they're a wicked regime. You know, they're not peace loving. You know, if you if you look at those other uh, Mohammedan nations, if I could call them that, uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, um, Turkey, uh, even Iraq now. Uh, and Pakistan and Afghanistan, they're not aggressors towards any other nations. You know, they're, they're just not in, in aggression to other nations. There's minor aggression between Turkey and, and Syria, but it's not so much a, go a governmental uh, level. It's t Turkey oppressing the Kurds in the north of Syria and in the north of Iraq. Um, but the only countries there that are provocative really well is, is Iran uh, and Yemen because Yemen is an ally of Iran uh, and then wicked Mohammedans in Lebanon who are financed, supported and encouraged and, and commanded by Iran in Lebanon, the Hezbollah of course the wicked Hamas Mohammedans uh, in the south of Israel and in Egypt so it's really Iran is the only one that is uh, causing trouble in that whole region. That's the reality. Anyway, enough of geopolitics, friends. Uh, there is a lot of good information on YouTube. There's a lot of good uh, channels where you can learn about these things, what's really going on, friends. But do be careful what you listen to. Um, there are news channels that are good in many ways, but not so good in other ways. Uh, one of them is called Al Jazeera. Al hyphen Jazeera J Z W -E R A. In many ways, it's a good place to get news. But when it comes to Israel and the Jewish people, because Muslims feast upon the devil, um, and they are bedeviled and deluded from an early age, they are racist and Jew hating and anti-Semitic. So therefore, anything they touch, uh, um, you know, concerning the Jews. Is, is biased towards hatred and, and reductionism and, uh, well, and genocidal feelings, devilish uh, wickedness. So, so you know, you can, you can learn facts from Al Jazeera, um, but you have to realise that um, it, uh, some of its reporting concerning the Jews and Israel is, is false, you know, or it's, it's cherry-picked narratives with a certain flair. Um, so... There are many places. Uh, similarly, historically, you know, the BBC is a very wicked organisation. For example, people say, oh, the BBC, you know, but it's actually a wicked instrument, the BBC, you know. So, uh, ironically enough, YouTube is, is one of the best places to, to get genuine news. But, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the reality is when it comes to any type of news agency, um, they they all well, I would say three quarters of them are led by men and women who have a skewed perception. You know, uh, they have evil intents. You see, they don't. They don't. Most of them don't have good intents. Some of them do, and so they're not saying they're all evil. But you've got to use discernment. Um, so sometimes it's best just to garner the facts and stay in prayer in the scripture, which is what we're going to do right now. So, thanks for listening, friends. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, my email is in the description. Um, you can reach me by email or you can feel free to comment on this podcast. Um, if you have any questions or comments, that's perfectly fine. So, Esther, Chapter 5. Um, now, of course, at this time, um, the uh, wicked Haman has persuaded the king Ahasuerus uh, to send forth a royal law that all the Jews are about to be killed, uh, often in brutal fashion, and they 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 were they'd been given a date whereby their wives and their children and themselves were to be killed. Um, so it was an awful time in, in their history. But God had a plan. God had purposes. You know, many of the thoughts in a man's heart. The counsel of the Lord that did stand. So, um, here we have the situation where uh, in the previous chapter we saw 
uh, the three messages either way between Esther and Mordecai. Esther wanted to comfort Mordecai. He didn't want the fancy clothes. He was wailing and mourning, wearing sackcloth and ashes for days. Uh, and then she sent a tag again to him. And uh, he said, well, this is exactly what's going on. And he even sent a copy of the decree back to Esther. Um, and uh, then she sent back again to him. Um, uh, and said, I can't go into the king. If I go into the king, Mordecai said, go in and supplicate King Ahasuerus to save the Jews, otherwise we're finished. Uh, Esther sent back, no, I can't. If I go into the king uh, without him asking me, that I'll be killed. And Mordecai sent back, says, well, you know what, you're going to be killed anyway because this law has been set out. You must go in and, and supplicate the king for your people, the Jews. So she sent back and said, command all the Jews to fast and pray for me for three days and three nights, which is to apply the efficacy of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ for the Jewish people. And that retrospectively is what occurred at this time. The mercy of Christ, the King of the Jews, the King of Israel, towards them at that time, um, 2,500 years ago, that was such that mercy and grace was evidenced in time um, and that uh, and that Esther moved with compassion and righteous thoughts, having been raised by the godly Mordecai in righteousness, goodness and truth and faith and trust in Jehovah Elohim. She was moved uh, and so she sent back instruction to Mordecai, fast and pray for me uh, for three days, three nights and I'll do it. And we have those great words in Esther 4. Who knows? Maybe for such a time as this have you come into the kingdom. Esther chapter 5, friends. And it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on royal apparel and stood, by, stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the entrance to the house. And it was so when the king saw the Queen Esther standing in the court that she obtained grace in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand, and Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. And the king said to her, What will you, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given to thee, even to the half of the kingdom. And Esther said, If it seem good to the king, let the king and Haman come this day to the banquet that I prepared for him. It came to pass on the third day, I shall read again, friends, that Esther put on royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the entrance to the house. It was so when the king saw the queen Esther standing in the court that she obtained grace in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. And Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. The king said to her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given thee even to the half of the kingdom. And Esther said, If it seem good to the king, let the king and Haman come this day to the banquet that I prepared for him. The king said, Hasten, Haman, that it may be done as Esther has said. And the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. The king said to Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? It shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be done. And Esther answered and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found grace in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I'll do tomorrow, according to the king's word. And Haman went forth that day joyful and glad of heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of fury against Mordecai. But Haman controlled himself, came home, and he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife. And Haman told him of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all wherein the king had promoted him 
and how he'd advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. And the man said, yes, as to the queen, let no man come in with the king to the banquet that she had pre prepared but myself. And tomorrow also I'm invited to her with the king. Yet all this is of no avail to me so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends to him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and in the morning speak to the king that Mordecai may be hanged on it. Then go in merrily with the king to the banquet, and the thing pleased the man, and he caused the gallows to be made. Now, so we have here friends um, that on the third day Esther put on royal apparel. So that's the lamb's wife, the redeemed, clothed with immortality in time. That's what this is. So it's God's counsels, God's purposes in eternity for sinners, for the Jews, for mankind. Uh, and the application of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what that is. Whenever you see the third day in scripture, it has in view the resurrection of the Son of God Christ died on a Friday, was in the tomb on a Saturday, and arose on the third day of the Sunday. See? On the third day, as they are put on a royal apparel. So that's the saints clothed um, in royal bride, bride uh, adornment, in royal clothing, which is really the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. The saints not just that the saints have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are the righteousness of Jesus the Christ. Christ is the saints. You are Christ in that sense. In that sense, and I say this carefully, I hope I'm not speaking to any, uh, any uh, 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 immature Christians when I say this, but a true born-again Christian, a blood-washed saint, is Christ in the sense that they are the body of Christ. That's what it is. You you eat the flesh, drink the blood of the Lord Jesus through faith and trust in him. And you become the body of Jesus. That's the truth. You eat the body of Jesus. You become the body of Jesus. That's the mystery. So God has fulfilled everything in one man. God started with one man. Everything will be completed with one man. All mankind has is Christ Jesus. All mankind needs is Christ Jesus. Anyone that's not part of the Lamb's wife will be damned. All there is is the Lord Jesus Christ and his wife, made up of hundreds of millions of human beings. Now, so on the third day, have you put on royal apparel, friends? Are you the righteousness of Jesus? Are you Christ's body? These are realities, friends. Are you the body of Christ, friends? Have you put on the royal apparel? Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and give no occasion to the lust of the flesh, to the flesh that you may fulfill the lust thereof. Walk ye in him. You have learned the truth in Jesus. So there she is, in her fancy clothes, standing in the inner court of the king's house. The king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the entrance to the house. So he was looking towards the entrance of his house. And it was so, when the king saw the queen as they are standing in the court, she obtained grace in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand and as they drew near and touched the top of the scepter. The king said to her, What will you, Queen Esther, and what is your request? It shall be given you even to the half of the kingdom. And Esther said, If it seems good to the king, let the king's man come this day to the banquet that I have prepared for him. So this uh, is a type of, of a Christian uh, approaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Ahasuerus uh, is both a type of God the Father and God the Son. Uh, Esther is a type of the church, the Lamb's wife, the Christians, the redeemed. 
and uh, Mordecai is a type of Christ Jesus. So in this instance here, it's his, his most precious. You see uh, human beings in, in type S, they're approaching the Lord Jesus Christ on God's terms, you see. Um, all mortals are entirely creature subject. El Elohim Yahovah rules the whole universe. All mortals are creature possession, doubly owned. Not a hand or a foot moves on this planet without Jehovah. You see, so this, uh, so mankind approaches Christ on Christ's terms, on God's terms, do you understand? And she knew that she had to approach righteously. So as she approaches clothed in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And as Christ Jesus, that's the true Christ, has brought many sons to glory. True Christianity is righteous men and women approaching God uh, through the efficacy of the finished work, the blood atonement, uh, the substitutionary finished work of Christ. Uh, by way of uh, of the righteousness of Jesus in God's sight. Saints approach God and they stand complete in Christ. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. You see, you are complete. So this woman approaches by, on, by the virtue of the death of Christ on the third day, clothed with Christ. And uh, she she seeks intercession and mercy for mankind. But she has to do it uh, surreptitiously, as it were, at this point. She you know, she simply asks that uh, um, she can make a banquet so that the, the, the king and her man can come to a banquet. And he says, right, oh, get the banquet ready. Let's do that. And uh, And at the banquet... Right, what's going on, Esther? What can I do for you? What's the situation? Uh, she says, oh, here's, my, here's what I request. I'd like to have another banquet tomorrow. Um, and then I'll tell you what my request is. So the king says, fair enough, make another banquet tomorrow. So her man, after this banquet with the king and the queen, thinks, wow, this is great, you know. I'm really influential now, not only... Um, am I uh, uh, one of the king's princes and I've got great authority and everyone worships me but now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, having, I'm having something to eat with the king and queen every day this is great so he leaves joyful and glad of heart selfish, self-centred you see but when he sees Mordecai in the king's gate who is in type Christ Jesus Mordecai didn't stand up or move for him he was full of fury against Mordecai. See, so what that's is a very precious thing for me is that because that's Mordecai is saying, um, I'm neither I'm neither put up nor down, I'm not moved for you. One is not moved. <laughs> Mordecai's like, and you know, and uh, Haman is furious that Mordecai won't worship him, you see. So what that's a type of is the devil's fury towards Christ Jesus and Christians that will that lead holy, righteous lives, that, uh, that do the will of God, that really exemplify the divine nature. True Christianity is, is the divine nature immortality flowing through the finished work, the agonies, the wounds, the blood of Jesus to mankind. That's really what Christianity is. And everything is by grace. You're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. The bigger picture is that it's very simply uh, immortality, the divine nature, eternal life flowing through the blood and the agonies and the wounds of the Lord Jesus 2,000 years ago. That, that's what Christianity is. So any good virtues that any true Christian has is because of divine life, the divine nature of which you partake by eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of God. That is real Christianity. This is the kingdom of Elohim Yavar. So, 
Hamans, oh, this is just great. You know, I'm having, I'm having, yeah, my food with uh, the king and the queen. Um, but he was uh, soon shaken when he saw that a man would worship him or, or do him obeisance. Um, and this is something that uh, is of note. I've heard people say in times past how they can be easily moved by someone that gives them a funny look. You know, if they're in a shop and a shopkeeper doesn't treat them right or, you know, someone doesn't recognise them on one of the aisles, you know, or walking down the street, it knocks them off Kelton. Oh, no, you know. Well, the Proverbs talk about that. You know, if your strength fail you in the day of trouble, um, then you're, you're not very strong, you know. And, uh, you know, we're not to be soon shaken or soon troubled, you know. And... Uh, Every heart knows its own sorrow, but a stranger doesn't intermeddle with your joy. You know, you're not to be soon shaken. Another term is emotional sobriety. Um, balance. It's really a divine gift that, again, comes through, through grace. Everything is by grace. Your next breath is from grace. Every good thing that any human has or will ever experience is by the goodness of Elohim Yavah. That's reality. So Haman is a type of mankind uh, at the revelation of the Son of God. The whole planet is waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. There will come a moment in human history when all mankind will see the Lord Jesus Christ. Ezekiel tells us clearly there will also come a time when all mankind will see the devil. We read in Job, it says the sons of God appeared before Jehovah and Satan was amongst them. Satan possibly still thinks he's the son of God. He's deluded himself. The devil is deluded. Iniquity and wickedness is like that. It deludes a person's mind. So, of course, the devil's very angry because he's waiting to be chained and cast into the pitch darkness of the bottomless abyss uh, for a thousand earth years where he will be tormented by the sorrows and sufferings and death of everyone that's ever sorrowed or suffered or died. Um, that's where he'll be for a thousand earth years. And then he'll be released for a very short time, uh, and then he'll be cast into the lake of sulfurious brimstone and eternal punishment. The smoke of his torment will ascend before me night and day, forever, says Yahovah. No. Um here we are. So 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 when when Haman is furious at seeing Mordecai not worshiping him, it's a type of mankind, unregenerate mankind's response to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um men like to control and manipulate, but you can't control the controller. <laughs> um you know God is sovereign and Christ is sovereign. Um, so it's a very precious verse for me to think uh, of uh, a foolish, uh, fruitless human like Haman seeing Mordecai. And that, once again, Haman means the man or of man. Ha in Hebrew means the. Sometimes it means of. So you have Melech Hamelachim or Adon ha Adonahim. Melech Hamelachim is king of kings. Adon ha Adonahim is lord of lords. Um, but it could also be the Lord, the Lord, or so King, the King. So, so, so it's also descriptive. So Haman is the man. When the man saw Mordecai, when mankind saw the Lord Jesus Christ, he was very angry um, because Jesus uh, does not fear men and devils. Men and devils fear Jesus. See? The Lord Jesus will destroy with the breath of his lips all of his enemies. It is written, my right hand shall find all my enemies. The wicked does the Lord destroy off this earth every morning. So Haman had gone from being very happy at his uh, uh, seeming earthly uh, providence and well-being to be uh, entertained specifically by the king, uniquely by the king and queen. Um, and that the king and queen, of course, is a type of God, and Haman is a type of natural man. 
um, a, a natural man, uh, he's selfish and self-centered and bedeviled and deluded. So a man thinks, oh, this is great, you know, just wonderful. Uh, but of course he's deluded. Um, and then here, um, he's furious now, so he's deluded and bedeviled, very angry that Mordecai won't worship him. So he comes home, gets his friends and his wife, and he starts boasting. It's all about him. Selfish, self-centered, self-obsessed. Oh, look how much money I've got. Oh, yes, you know, oh, yes. I remember friends, I've, well, I suppose over the years I've had a lot of experience with this. Oh, yes, I've, I've got money. Oh, yes, I remember one time I had a conversation with a nice, pleasant chap, and uh, he glories in his riches. You know, well, the Bible says, let not the uh, wise man glory in his wisdom or the rich man in his riches, but let him that glories glory in me, the glory in this, that he knows me and understands me and that I am Yahovah exercising loving kindness and truth in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. That's in Jeremiah, you'll find that. And anyway, I spoke to this chap. who was at a country house, I was visiting a few years ago, and uh, within within about a minute and a half, he's telling me about his pension, and, you know, I was got all this great pension and investment, you know. Because a rich man's wealth is his strong city. A lot of people that have money, they don't see a need for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they, they see their money as their saviour, their deliverance. You understand? It will be said to a lot of earthly rich people that have money, you had your reward. You had your reward. That's the truth. It's easier for a rich man to enter through the eye of a needle and to come into the kingdom of God. It was said to the rich young ruler, go give away everything you have and you'll have treasures in heaven. What is your treasure, friends? What do you take pleasure in, friends? Do you take pleasure in the well-being of others? Are you connected with others? Are you supporting others? Are you inspiring others? Are you assuring others? Or are you selfish, self-centered, self-obsessed? Perhaps you're a person that's become very isolated by your own foolish choices perhaps you've uh, made unwise choices uh, based on feelings and charismania and sentiment that have isolated you from other persons perhaps you're inefficient and uh, unproductive and unfruitful in the kingdom of Elohim Yavar well make the changes necessary uh, get back into society take action, get connected uh, don't uh, be like an ostrich um, you know, don't hide your talent uh, in the ground. Well, he was Mordecai. Mordecai wasn't hiding away. Uh, he was in the king's gate. And he wasn't moved by the devil or devilish human beings. So here's a man now. He's got his friends and his wife. Oh, yes, I'm very wealthy, you know. Oh, yes. Oh, just the man, me. Look at me. Oh, and my children. Look at my children. Oh, yes, you know, don't you know? If you converse with a lot of uh, modern persons, they'll tell you about their money and perhaps their children and how well they've done or they've been promoted at work, you know. So here's the man. And oh, yes, the king's promoted me above all his other servants. Uh, and the man says, Oh, yes, the queen. Wouldn't have anyone else come in with the king and I to her banquet. And guess what? Tomorrow I'm also invited with with the king to her banquet. And then verse 13. Yet all this is of no avail to me. As long as I see Mordecai, i.e. the Jew, sitting at the king's gate. And of course, we all know that the two wings of the great, evil, the great eagle um in Revelation 12, uh, the only nation with two great wings, it's in the signatories, of course, the United States of America. And uh, they are the ones protecting that tiny democracy, wherein uh, over a million Muslims live in Israel, at peace and happily and equality. Um, and so Israel does sit presently in the king's gate. America is the global policeman. 
God rules the planet militarily through the United States of America at the present moment, and all the other nations know it. And uh, so the Jews currently live in the King's Gate, you understand? So this chapter is very pertinent. Uh, if you was to see uh, Haman as being uh, Iran, uh, Iran, Haman, Haman ran, Iran. You see, so you you have uh, you have here a man very angry that Mordecai is sitting in the king's gate. The king still allows Mordecai to sit in his gate. You see, and this was enough to make make a man murderous. You know, he was murderous about this. So it just goes to show you that that uh, wives can be very, very women can be very 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 wicked. Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends say to him. Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and in the morning speak to the king that Mordecai may be hanged on it. Then go in merrily with the king to the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. Now, we do know what happens. I'm sure Melis has read the book that the wicked Haman himself is hanged on his own gallows that he'd made for the Jews. There is no counsel against the Lord. Um, I suppose Haman is also a type of Judas Iscariote in that Haman was actually uh, harming himself. You know, by, by doing evil, he actually did evil to himself. By intending evil and planning evil and being part of evil schemes of wickedry, he was actually harming himself. You know, as a man so, so shall he read. And, um, you know, if you saw to the wind, you reap the whirlwind. Um, and here in this instance, we very much see that uh, a man will become the third man uh, to die upon tree. Now, I mentioned this in one of the previous podcasts. Historically, now in the in modern English, we see all oh, lots that door made, or it's made of wood. But historically, you could easily say it's made of tree, which is not untrue. You know, I'm looking at a wooden piano here, and it's made of tree, you know, but in modern fact, you would say it's made of wood. And so there are three men in the book of Esther that die upon tree, that, you know, that die upon wood. And uh, the wicked Haman becomes the third man. You might remember, I believe it's the second chapter of Esther. Big Van um, dies upon the, uh, the tree. And Teresh, see, there are two of the king's chamberlains, two of his bodyguards that kept the threshold. They had a wicked plan to assassinate King Gahasuerus. Um, Mordecai found out about it and informed the king, and so the king was safe. And these two men uh, were hung upon the tree, it says, at the end of chapter two. They were, the matter was investigated, found out they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Cursed is anyone that's hanged upon a tree. Um, so you have three persons that die upon the tree in the book of Esther. So, you, so that's definitely a type of the three persons that died upon the tree 2,000 years ago for all love thee. You see. Um, so Haman is a very unusual type. Um, of Christ very unusual um, in what ways would he be a type of Christ well he, he died upon a tree upon upon a, something that he designed himself Christ laid down his life nobody took it from him he chose the power to lay down he chose to lay down his life and take his life up again um, it was for the purpose of accomplishing his own will uh, a man wanted to accomplish his own will. Christ accomplished his own will, the difference being for eternal redemption, blessing and encouragement, and immortalization of mankind, physical immortality for mankind, the restoration of all things, God's great counsels. So, it, so it's most interesting. Um, and Christ, uh, by dying, uh, destroyed all wickedness, destroyed the devil and, and all wickedness. 
and everybody died that day upon the cross. It's a holy mystery. Christ was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, you see. Um, so Haman is most certainly the type of Christ, possibly the most unusual type of Christ in Scripture. And much more could be said about these things. So, three men die upon the tree in the book of Esther. Yes. I would imagine as well one could carefully say that there's a type of the first man and woman in a man and his wife's arrest. So you've got You've got two men and two wives in this chapter and in this book, haven't you? You've got you've got Haman and Zeresh, and then you've got Ahasuerus and Esther. You see, so they would be a type of the Lord Jesus Christ and his wife, which is everyone that will have physical immortality, everlasting gladness, everlasting joy. And then you have Haman and Zeresh, the doomed, the damned, the foolish, the bedeviled, the wretched, the wenches and wretches, those that are damned. Yes. So Zeresh, his wife, has a wicked plan as well, you see. She sees the hatred and wickedness of her husband. No, I just can't do this, Mordecai. Doesn't matter how many children I have, how much money I've got, how promoted I am in the kingdom, if this chap won't worship me. I just can't. Oh, no, can't bear it. You see, so it's a, it's a type of the sufferings of the devil. Um, students of scripture will see the sufferings of the devil in scripture, principally in, in Revelation and Ezekiel, uh, but elsewhere in time, we see here that uh, that Haman couldn't bear the thought uh, that if he couldn't have the worship of men, um, there was nothing for him. He couldn't carry on living without the worship of men. That was the position of Haman. Exceptionally wealthy. Um the second most powerful, third most powerful man in the whole empire. And this was a huge empire from India to Ethiopia. This was a huge empire that Asu was ruled over. And Mordecai was, was one of the most powerful men on the planet at that time. Sorry, Haman was one of the most powerful men on the planet at that time. But that was not good enough for him. If he couldn't have the worship of men, there was nothing for him, and that's how the devil feels. If the devil can't have your worship through the practice of sin, uh, particularly the habitual practice of sin, then there's nothing for the devil in you. It is written, the prince of this world comes, but in me he has nothing. See? So that's what's involved here. Uh, a man can't bear it. It doesn't matter how many women he has, how many children he has, how much money he has, how powerful he is. Um, if he can't have the worship of men, uh, he's unhappy. Whereas Mordecai, the other hand, just wanted the well-being of man. You see, he wanted. It, 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 I suppose it's a type of um, David, and I think of Absalom, his son. Um, King David, uh, King David went through a lot of things in his time as king. He really did, you know. And in the book, the five books of Psalms, you can learn a great deal. Uh, in fact, the Psalms are the best place to learn about the relationship between the father and the son. Indeed, largely the Psalms is uh, in the round. It's largely a discourse in the Godhead between the father and the son concerning sinners. That's largely what it is. It's largely intercessor and intercessory mediatorial work that's what the whole book is if you look closely in the psalms you'll find something for your own christian life um you will find uh, obviously historical realities for the persons named in the psalms at that time you will also um, have uh, things that apply to all mankind things that apply to israel things that apply to the church but principally 
you will see very much relationship between the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. Um, that's largely what you will see. And many of the things David went through were along those lines. Um, and uh, on, mo on more than one occasion, multiple occasions, David was under great threat uh, from his own family. Um, and uh, you know, at least a couple of his sons, he had to actually flee the throne. And they had, actually had to go on the run from one of his sons, whose name was Ab Shalom. Now, Ab, pronounced Av in Hebrew, A-B, where we get Abba. It means father. Av means father. And uh, Shalom is peace, well-being, prosperity, and health. Av Shalom, father, peace, prosperity, health, uh, well-being. Um, great name, but not a great guy. Um, Av Shalom wanted to kill his father, David, and have the kingdom so he could be king. So David had to go on the run. And it is written that uh, Av Shalom, before, uh, before he made his attempt to get the throne, he would stand some distance from where the king was. And before, when anyone came to see the king, he would say, oh, I'll sort it out. Why are you coming to see the king? And, uh, and then he would talk to the people and he would eventually gain support for his position and stand for himself. And it is written that Absalom stole the hearts of the people. Um, but David won the hearts of the people. And that's a type of Christ. Um, and unrighteous persons seeking worldly prestige and place. So there's much in this book. Three men die upon tree in the book of Esther. You have the first man, the first woman at, in type Havana and Zeresh. You have the second man, the second woman in type uh, King Ahasuerus, Queen Esther. You have uh, Mordecai, a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, Esther, a type of the Lamb's wife, the church, the redeemed, the pearl of great price. King Ahasuerus is both a type of God the Father uh, and God the Son, and also a type of earthly power. Um, so it's all very precious. And of course, Christ, the head of all principality and power, the King of all the kings, and the Lord of all the lords. So we have this wicked woman, Zeresh, similar name to Tiresh, who with Big Than conspired as the king's bodyguards, the king's doorkeepers of the threshold of the king, Big Than and uh, Teresh. They wanted to kill and assassinate Ahasuerus. And Mordecai found out and protected the king and told Ahasuerus. And the matter was investigated and they died upon the tree, as will in the next, I believe it's the next chapter, um, or the chapter after that a man dies upon tree upon this gallows made of made of wood um, and his wife's name is Zeresh you see so so this wicked woman she sees the hatred and murder in the heart and life of Mordecai she really sees the devil in her husband so um, Esther she saw righteousness and purity and holiness both in Mordecai and in Ahasuerus. She went to beseech God, really. Esther is a type of all mankind that are to be saved, the, the, uh, the Jews, the Christians, the Lamb's wife. Esther, when she was raised as a child, Mordecai adopted her because uh, um, his uncle and aunt, who were the parents of Esther, died. So Mordecai adopted her and raised her as a child, no doubt in holiness, righteousness and truth. And so because of uh, the mind and heart and purposes and goodness of God, we see what's right, good and proper prevailing in, in the life of Mordecai and Esther. And they had a godly connection. Um, and Esther had faith in Mordecai. Mordecai had faith in Esther. And Esther had faith in Ahasuerus. Uh, but through it all is the sovereignty of Elohim Yavar, um, the greatness of Jehovah, the sovereignty of Jehovah, and the goodness of Jehovah. Whereas Zeresh, she did not see purity and holiness and righteousness in her husband. She, uh, she saw wickedness and hatred and murder and she went along with it and came with a plan uh, to, of murder of the Jews, beginning with Mordecai. 
So there you have it, friends. Uh, more, much more could be said about these things. Um, righteousness reigned through the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, Mordecai has to do with uh, with the atonement, with the mind of God, with the application of the finished work of Christ retrospectively, five hundred years before the event that mercy and grace was being shown here the well-being and preservation of the Jewish nation. The Jewish nation is the most important nation on the planet. The well-being of the Jews, the well-being of Jerusalem, the well-being of the Son of God is the well-being of all mankind. You have the mystery of equity and the mystery of iniquity, the principle of salvation the principle of reprobation. You can learn most about those things in the book of Proverbs, friends, on this channel. 29 podcasts cover the entire book of Proverbs. And we see here with Haman and Zeresh, the mystery of iniquity, the principle of reprobation. We see uh, with Esther and Mordecai, the principle of righteousness and goodness, the mystery of equity. Um, really the heart and mind and counsels of Jehovah Elohim having effect in time upon the earth. Well, Hyrkanus, we will be back soon with another broadcast. Stay strong in the spirit, in the scripture, under the blood, declaring the full name, the Lord Jesus the Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Baruch Havah Hashem Adonai Yahuwah Elohim, the Sovereign of the Universe.